So I've been getting a lot of comments from my last video on how I actually set up my Raspberry Pi to mine crypto. Uh, so here I'll go over exactly how I did that. Now keep in mind, when I say mining crypto on the Raspberry Pi, what I'm actually doing technically is connecting to a mining pool and mining a coin called Monero, which isn't really a widely known token. And it's not actually that viable to begin with because the Raspberry Pi is just limited by the nature of its hardware. But either way, this is how you can get started. What I did was I pretty much followed this guide that I found on Tom's hardware. And so I won't bore you with the installation steps. Basically, there's a couple commands here that you can just run. And what this does is it installs a CPU miner tool, which is the tool that we're gonna be using to connect to the mining pool. And that'll actually get the Raspberry Pi actually mining some crypto. So what I have for my Raspberry Pi actually is a headless setup. Which you can see right there, that's my Raspberry Pi right there, headless setup. So. So basically what that means is that I use my primary computer with a single keyboard and mouse to be able to remotely control and run scripts off of the Raspberry Pi. So right here I've actually SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi and right here I have a VNC session going. So when I ran those install scripts, you can just copy and paste them from the website as is. Uh, but you wanna make sure that you're copying and pasting those commands into the directory on your Pi where you actually wanna install CPU miner. So for instance, for me, I installed it in the root directory, but something more recommended would probably be doing it in, in documents or creating an applications folder. So once you've run those commands, you'll see this CPU miner folder right here. And what we want is this CPU miner binary right here. So this is the actual mining application. Once you've done that, you're gonna wanna go head on over to minergate.com, which is how you're gonna be connecting to the mining pool through minergate.com. What you do here is you set up your account. And once you set up your account, you head on over to the mining pools tab select Monero, which is the coin we're going to be mining, and it's gonna bring you to this page right here. And at the bottom of the page, you're gonna see the instructions to actually connect to the mining network. So a couple key things to note here is that the mining pool uses your email address as an identifier. So if you accidentally enter someone else's email address, they're going to be rewarded with any of the crypto that your Raspberry Pi is going to be mining. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna head on over back to my Raspberry Pi. You wanna make sure you're in this CPU miner directory because that's where the actual binary lives. And once you've got the binary set, this is the command that you're gonna to wanna to run. So this command is once again, copy pasted off the Tom's hardware website. So you can just copy paste that for easier usability. But I definitely recommend checking out this page beforehand, which is what I did, to make sure you have the server URL and the port correct, because this is subject to change. You wanna go with normal difficulty. There's a pool for higher difficulty too, which is just a different port number. But the likelihood of the Raspberry Pi being able to keep up with this is very little. Not to say it's gonna keep up with normal to begin with. So here we go. Uh, I run this command and we're off. So basically what's gonna happen now, there's gonna be four minor threads that are gonna be starting. And then your Pi is gonna start actually mining some crypto, which is quite exciting. Once we go back to our dashboard here, you're gonna see that this status is gonna to change to online and your Pi is actually gonna be mining some crypto. A couple things to note here is that you have good shares, bad shares, and bad shares. What good shares are is basically computations or problems that your Pi has successfully solved and you're getting rewarded for those shares with the Monero token. Invalid shares are shares that your Pi wasn't able to complete in time. So someone else completed that share while your Pi was also trying to complete it. And so you lost out to the share to whoever completed that problem for that share first. And bad shares are kind of similar. It's if your Pi maybe like drops network connection or the CPU load gets too high and it can't keep up, then the share is just gonna be invalid. I'm just gonna refresh here and we're off as you can see. So it gives you the hash rate and everything. All right, so now we're loaded, we're online. We've got one active worker and we're actually mining crypto. So this is actually a really cool and neat project just to intro yourself into crypto. Raspberry Pi obviously isn't very powerful hardware and you're probably gonna have a lot of trouble mining any sort of viable token like Bitcoin or Ethereum. But at least this helps you dabble with the world of crypto using just a Raspberry Pi, like simple $35 hardware. You can look at your hash rate, you can play around with this. There's a whole bunch of options with the CPU miner command here too. So I'm just gonna close this off. And if you go CPU miner H, which is just a shorthand for help for most programs, you can see there's a whole bunch of other options here that you can actually dig into. And if you get like uh, some sort of external GPU or something like that for your Raspberry Pi or a smaller architecture like Raspberry Pi type devices that are meant for crypto mining, you can just join a pool instead of having to, you know, download the entire blockchain and get set up from scratch. This gives you a lot of options here. So dash A kryptonite is what we had selected in our original command, which is for Monero. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff here that you can mess around with and see. There might be some other coins here that you can probably explore that might be more viable to mine than Monero. But again, with crypto, it's usually the more popular coins are the ones that are gonna actually hold value and make it worthwhile. So this is just a fun little project. You might run into issues, like I've run into networking issues with my Raspberry Pi while mining 
crypto like sometimes there'll be some network interference and the application will just cut out for 10 15 20 minutes or until i restart it and then the invalid shares and the bad shares too is always going to be an issue because of how limited the raspberry pi is maybe if there's something like a pi coin that's somehow only restricted to raspberry pi hardware that would be cool that'd be a fun little side project i tried to get dogecoin up in my original video and i thought that could maybe be viable on a raspberry pi but it turns out it's not because of how popular it is and how many people are mining it so that would mean needing an external hard drive to actually download the entire blockchain and probably better hardware to actually mine something viable out of doge now i'm also running a homebridge server on my raspberry pi which lets me connect non-homekit certified products to homekit for example, like Google cameras. And so the dashboard for Homebridge actually shows me the CPU load. So without the CPU miner running, I've got an average CPU load of around 15 to 25%, somewhere in that range. But as soon as I connect to the mining pool, it will go straight up to 100% and the temperature sort of goes up too. Because obviously when you're mining crypto, it's gonna try to maximize whatever remainder of your CPU percentage you have left so that it can actually mine as best as it can. And the memory usage stays fairly, fairly good. It's just a CPU that just cranks up to the max. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you're successful in connecting your Raspberry Pi. And let me know if you find out some other token that might be a little more viable on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Oh, and just by the way, if anybody happens to know why my VNC connection to my Pi through my Mac is really slow and really laggy like this, uh, let me know down below. I'm using the default VNC viewer that's built into Mac, but I'm using TeamViewer on the Pi itself, but I didn't expect it to be this choppy.